In this video, you'll discover the one supplement all longevity experts are taking. But today, we're gonna be super practical. Today, you're gonna discover which forms the experts are taking and choose the perfect type for your body's unique needs without making a mistake. You will see Dr. Steven Sinatra, Dr. Peter Atia, Dr. Rhonda Patrick, Dr. Andrew Huberman, plus my 16 years of research. Magnesium is that unsung hero. You gotta take it. And I'll tell you, from the cardiovascular point of view, it is the best nutraceutical that supports blood pressures. I'm trying to get up to about a gram of total magnesium or elemental magnesium in my system. Is there anything that supplement-based or food-based compounds that you think are especially useful for brain and or body health? I do think magnesium is important mm -hmm. in there as well. I mean, I think about 40% of the U.S. population doesn't get enough magnesium. It's an essential mineral we're supposed to be getting from our diet. It's also involved in utilizing ATP as well as DNA repair enzymes. We have repair enzymes in our body called DNA repair enzymes. These are enzymes that are involved in repairing damage to our DNA. They require magnesium. Magnesium is a cofactor for them. Let's talk about magnesium next. You're, you're the supplement experts. What can you say? How does it affect aging remote? For me, the big thing about aging uh, is reducing inflammation. And also it helps the enzymes that repair it, your DNA. So if you don't want to have DNA damage, you want to repair this damage, you must have enough magnesium. It helps your body repair DNA damage. The DNA repair issue is a big deal because it's one of the hallmarks of aging. We lose both the epigenetic information, but also the genetic information, which also can lead to tumors and mortality. Important note about magnesium. Let's hear the cardiologist, Dr. Sinatra, speaks about that. Now, the problem with magnesium is it's, this is one mineral that's hard to find in nature. Even though it's abundant in foods, the soils are depleted and the water supply is actually depleted. A plant cannot make magnesium. They can only suck it out of the ground. And if the agriculture business can get away by not putting enough magnesium into the ground, you won't get it. Vitamins and polyphenols plant can make. In addition, the need for magnesium goes up even more with high stress, which increases the need for magnesium in order to allow the body to relax. Another aspect is our high heavy metal exposure due to coal plants and other toxins which can displace magnesium. So this also increases the magnesium consumption and need by the body. Therefore, the need for supplementation is urgent even if for just maintenance, not to mention deficiency which 40% or more of people have. What are some foods that are rich in magnesium? Leafy greens, dark chocolate, everything green is uh, gonna have magnesium. Like deep green, anything deep green. How do you test if you're deficient from it? The best test that we have right now is they take the red blood cells and they see how, uh, how much magnesium is inside. So it's a blood test. Yeah, but, but the issue is, in my experience, it only tells you the magnesium consumption in the last three months because a lot of that, you know, is stored in the bones and things like that. I think to be on the safe side, I would take every day. Side effects to taking magnesium? No, but if you do, then I would change maybe the, the form. There are many forms. And maybe instead of buying a, a tablet that has a lot of fillers, you can buy a capsule. Now we're going to focus on what comes with magnesium and how it can affect its benefits. Let's cover the forms right now and also discover which forms other health experts are taking so you can make up your own mind what you like the most. You have different forms of magnesium. The form refers to the compound that is attached to the magnesium molecule. This affects the absorption of magnesium, but also provides a different benefit. To all the benefits we spoke on magnesium, we're going to get even more than that. And in all of these forms, it's the same magnesium element. We have to remember that. That's important. Now, let's find the best magnesium to your situation. We also going to touch the timing. Which form should you take in which time? Let's cover them right now. So the first is magnesium malate. Let's hear Dr. Rhonda Patrick speaks about that. I would say yeah. malate would be the best. That has to do with the short chain at fatty acids being good for the gut and a lot of work done by a former colleague of mine and good friend, Mark Shiganaga, showing that the short chain fatty acids, citrate, malate, lactate, um, but but specifically malate really and lactate are the, are the, are the major ones that uh, get into the, to the gut epithelial cells and our uh, energy source for the mitochondria mm -hmm. and, and the goblet cells. Yeah, I take malate because it doesn't make me sleepy like some of the other forms of magnesium, which are, act as a mild sedative for me. 
So malate participates in the production of energy in our bodies. And Rhonda mistakenly referred to malate as a fatty acid. Malate is not a fatty acid. It's more of a log of wood to burn in your power plants. So to me, this is a type of magnesium that helps in creating energy. It's very good for energy production. Dr. Rhonda Patrick claimed that malate is also beneficial for nourishing the gut. For my research, I could not corroborate the gut benefits that she mentioned, only the energy aspect. By the way, my wife had most of her life chronic pain and she was misdiagnosed with fibromyalgia. That forced me to dig deeper into fibromyalgia and the leading expert in this area is Dr. Tatelbaum. We exchanged emails together and he told me that he recommends malate for the increase of energy. Worth noting that don't confuse malic acid with malate. When malic acid loses a proton, it becomes malate and it becomes more potent in the body. So this is what you get when you take magnesium malate. The bottom line is that to me, magnesium malate is very good for energy. We're gonna touch and organize everything at the end. Let's go to another type of magnesium that is good for energy, magnesium citrate. Um, magnesium citrate. Citrate is what is, I take. Is, yeah, it is a pretty, I take a pretty thorn. potent uh, gut stimulus. To well, digest. I take 100, 135 milligrams should be pretty good. Yeah. So to me, citrate is also a log that gets into the power plant. So it falls under the same category of magnesium malate. So citrate or malate, you can choose between the two of them, which of them is gonna give you the most amount of energy. The next magnesium form is magnesium orotate. Magnesium orotate consists of magnesium combined with erotic acid. Sounds like erotic. Let's hear Dr. Steven Sinatra, what he has to say about that. What form do you use? I use glycinate, glycinate citrate, orotate. Orotate's my favorite varietal. Magnesium orotate was used by these thoracic surgeons to get people off heart lung bypass because magnesium orotate drives ATP even better than magnesium citrate or glycinate. So that's why I started, or taurinate for that matter, that's why I started to use magnesium orotate. And indeed, a handful of studies have hinted at the potential benefits of magnesium orotate for cardiovascular health similar to what Dr. Sinatra said here. So to summarize so far, we have two types of magnesium to boost energy, while orotate, magnesium orotate, appears to support cardiovascular health. There is another type of magnesium that may potentially be very good for improving sleep quality. This is magnesium threonate. Let's hear Dr. Andrew Huberman speaks about that. Two supplements in particular have been shown to be effective for shortening the transition time to sleep and allowing people to ease into sleep more readily. And those are magnesium threonate, which is interchangeable with magnesium bisglycinate. Both have transporter systems that allow them to readily cross the blood brain barrier and they lead to a mild form of drowsiness. This is the type of magnesium I'm giving to my wife after her stroke because I need this brain penetration. Now let's move to the magnesium types that can affect the aging process and your longevity directly. The first one is magnesium glycinate. Magnesium glycinate is a compound formed by magnesium bound to two amino acids from the type of glycine. And glycine is very known in our longevity community because it supports the natural production of the antioxidant defense system. And indeed, studies have shown that glycine increases longevity. Also, glycine acts as an inhibitory neurotransmitter in the central nervous system and can exert a calming effect. So this means that glycine can maybe improve your sleep quality. How is that to do with longevity? Well, during sleep, our bodies repair the damage we accrued during the day. So if indeed we take a supplement that can help us improve sleep quality, then maybe it could help us to age better. We're gonna have less damage when we wake up in the morning. Now, regarding sleep quality, I noticed myself that magnesium glycinate improves my sleep quality. Let's hear Dr. Andrew Huberman speaks about what he found with his own body. Why I take magnesium three and eight and or bisglycinate before sleep, 30 to 60 minutes before sleep, definitely enhances my transition time to sleep um, and the depth of sleep, no question in my, in my experience. So this was Dr. Andrew Huberman. Let's hear Dr. Peter Artia mention what he takes. All in all, I'm trying to get up to about a gram of total magnesium or elemental magnesium in my system a day through slow mag, through magnesium L3 and 8, and through magnesium oxide. So I take all of those things. Dr. Peter Atia said that he takes slow mag. I believe that this is the product, as you can see. Magnesium glycinate, glycinate, which means L-lysine and N-lysine. 
In addition, Peter Atia says that he takes a separate glycine supplement, I guess for the same longevity reasons that we mentioned. Let's hear him speak about that. In the night, I take two grams of glycine. I use the Thorn brand. So let's get back to magnesium glycinate. What is notable to me in magnesium glycinate is the large amount of high quality glycine that you can get in relative to the magnesium. So when you take about 200 milligrams of magnesium, you get about 1.6 grams of glycine. This is a very good amount to get for a magnesium supplement. And this could replace potentially the glycine supplement that Peter Atia takes, especially if you buy from a high quality magnesium supplement, such as I recommend, I don't work with any supplement company, by the way, from the patented formula by Albion Minerals. This is the magnesium that I take personally. I like the longevity benefits and I like the patent that Albion Minerals have, which gives me confidence in the formula and in the quality of magnesium and glycine that I receive in this formula. To summarize, magnesium glycinate, besides providing high quality magnesium that is highly absorbable, gives you also glycine. And glycine helps in longevity in two ways. One is it helps to build the natural defense system against oxidation. And second, it may help you to improve your sleep quality, which can also increase the repair of the damage during the night. But that's not everything about magnesium and longevity because there is another type of magnesium that recently got the highlights as a longevity supplement. Before we go that, subscribe now and let's continue. This type of magnesium is magnesium torate. Magnesium torate is a bit of magnesium connected to a lot of L-taurine. This is in essence a very effective way to get this amino acid L-taurine into your body. About 83% of the tablet weight that you take comprise of L-taurine. So it's L-taurine supplement with a bit of magnesium. Now what has taurine to do with longevity? L-taurine was promoted for its cardiovascular health benefits. However, a 2023 study indicated an improvement in both health span and lifespan, corroborated by other studies, especially 2012 study. Let's cover them shortly now. This study from 2023 called Taurine Deficiency is a Driver of Aging. Blood concentration of taurine declines with age in mice, monkeys, and humans. We orally fed taurine once daily to middle-aged wild-type female and male mice until the end of their life. This is what they found. The median lifespan of taurine-treated mice increased by 10 to 12%. And this is very interesting. The life expectancy at 28 months increased by about 18 to 25%. This suggests that taurine somehow helps to prevent the runaway aging that happens in humans after age 65. I continue to quote, Taurine positively affected several hallmarks of aging. Taurine reduced cellular senescence, protected against telomerase deficiency, suppressed mitochondrial dysfunction, decreased DNA damage, and attenuates inflammation. All of these things, as you may know, excellent for longevity. They also found, I'm quoting, we observed similar effects in monkeys. This is very important because monkeys are the closest to us. They also mentioned that taurine did not affect the replicative lifespan of unicellular yeast yet it increased lifespan in multicellular worms. So this may be suggestive that taurine helps more in longevity in a more evolved animals. This is not so bad. So this is 2023 study. This is another interesting study we found from 2012. May 2012, effect of taurine on lifespan and antioxidant in fruit flies, which is another good model for longevity. I'm quoting, the results indicated that the mean lifespan in high dose group and the mean maximum lifespan of female in low, middle, and high doses increases compared with control group. So it seems that in every dose in female uh, fruit flies, it increased lifespan, and in male, only in high dose. This suggests maybe more benefits with dose increase. If you follow my channel, you know that I'm very sensitive with dosage, but this suggests that taurine doesn't have the negative impact when you go up in the dose. So maybe it suggests we can be more free with the dose that we take. And to me, it makes a bit more sense because it's simply a building block and a nutrient our body uses as opposed to a polyphenol that can exert some hormetic effect on our DNA. Then you go to unknown territory. Another interesting thing about taurine that it's also like glycine inhibitory neurotransmitter. So this suggests that if you take magnesium taurate or L-taurine, you want to take it close to sleep. It may also improve your sleep quality. Now let's get back to magnesium supplement. 
I prefer the separation of these supplements because both of them are valuable in their ideal amounts, simply because it doesn't have a lot of magnesium. You get a lot of L-taurine, but not so much magnesium. Another downside, in my opinion, for magnesium taurate that it comes in tablets, I prefer capsules whenever I can. So this is another preference I have to consume L-taurine as a capsule and not as a tablet with magnesium. But of course, you can never go wrong when you supplement with such a vital nutrients such as magnesium and L-taurine. Then you may ask, what do you think about L-taurine for longevity? Well, L-taurine has been the star in our longevity community in 2023. This fascinating molecule requires a completely separate video where we can delve deeper into longevity studies from the last 20 years and make a conscious decision that is specific to this supplement, as opposed to just something that is attached to magnesium. Subscribe now to get notified when it comes out. If you haven't supplemented with magnesium consistently in the past, then you may want to find a quick way to recover from magnesium deficiency. Let me explain why this could be a problem and let's get back to the forms. I heard your body can absorb it better through the skin, so getting magnesium cream. So the thing is, let's say that you're very, very deficient and you want to take a lot of magnesium, you can't. Because if you take over like 200 milligrams at one dose, most likely you have diarrhea. So taking it uh, through the skin is not going to cause you diarrhea, but you're going to uh, get the magnesium. So it's a great way to recover very quickly magnesium deficiency. So how do you apply magnesium via the skin? For that, you have two types, two forms of magnesium to help you. The first form is magnesium chloride, and it's available via cream that you rub against your skin. It's a great way to get a lot of magnesium at once, but also it helps you alleviate muscle cramps because you apply the magnesium directly against the muscle that is cramped. The second form of magnesium is magnesium sulfate, also commonly known as Epsom salt. So you may have heard Epsom salt term in the natural health community. As the name suggests, it is a salt which you mix into hot water. For example, you can use this salt to dissolve when you do a bath or when you do a foot soak. How do you do that? After buying the salt, Fill a basin with enough warm water to cover the feet up to the ankles. Then add about half a cup of Epsom salt to the water. Then soak the feet for 20-30 minutes. And this will allow plenty of magnesium to get absorbed via the skin. After a few weeks of recovering magnesium deficiency this way, you can stop with this type of magnesium and only focus on the tablets or capsules that fit you the best. No need to continue with applying via the skin. In the beginning of the video, I promised that we're going to customize the best form of magnesium to you. Let me give you a few simple guidelines on how to choose and how to time magnesium perfectly into your lifestyle. Now, this is my suggestion, but remember, it's not a personal recommendation or a medical advice. The first thing I recommend is splitting the dose. Giving that excessive magnesium intake, usually over 200 milligrams in one dose, can be counterproductive. It can cause diarrhea. So therefore, to absorb the most amount of magnesium, you have to split the dose. This automatically divides the timing that you take magnesium according to the benefit that you want. With all these types and forms of magnesium, what is the best strategy for you? So what do you want to take in the morning? Something that maybe is going to help you with energy. We spoke about three variants of magnesium that are reputed for energy boosting properties without inducing drowsiness. These were magnesium citrate, magnesium malate, and magnesium orotate. So I suggest personally try each of these three and see what gives you the energy that you want in the first part of the day. Now let's speak about the second dose of magnesium, which is at night or late evening. So we spoke about sleep and its effect potentially on longevity and also the quality of our lives. Here, we want to take advantage of the types of magnesium that may help with sleep quality. So we have glycinate, taurate, and threonate. These types of magnesium, because they are connected to amino acid, they are probably absorbed better on empty stomach because the amino acid that carries magnesium doesn't have to compete with the protein that you eat. Personally, I opt for magnesium glycinate, known for its benefits in promoting longevity and enhancing sleep quality. But I also now experiment with taking L-taurine as a separate supplement, and I try to time it before the sleep. 
So maybe I could have a synergetic effect for improving my sleep quality and also get longevity benefits. Now regarding the brands, I like glycinate from companies that use the Trax patent by Albion. For example, you can buy now magnesium glycinate. I actually take the powder form, it has a bit of sweet taste because glycine has a sweet taste. Another brand for magnesium glycinate is what Dr. Peter Atia takes, Slomag. This is magnesium glycinate with lysine. Magnesium glycinate, lysinate. Now, if you choose threonate, I would recommend experimenting with this a patent for magnesium threonate. I use the Magteen brand. By the way, anytime you're buying magnesium L3 and 8, just make sure it has magteen in it. So you could buy it from any different company. Now, for example, they sell these as well. As you can see, it's not always about the brand that you buy, but the patent the company buys from the, the source, from the manufacturer. Once you decide about which magnesium type you want to experiment with, this is the fourth step, which is experiment and document. A lot of the biggest benefits I achieved with my own body was when I documented the impact of supplements and food and had to write them down because memory is very subjective. You have to remember that the impact on your energy and ability to sleep better also had to do with your individual biochemistry. How these amino acids, which actually they work like neurotransmitters, how they affect your individual neurotransmitter makeup. So you have to experiment. So I suggest experimenting with different types of magnesiums and see how they affect your energy levels and your sleep. You won't be able to tell how they're gonna affect your longevity, of course. Now, in case you don't know my story, I've been researching longevity since 2007. I also had a background before that of chemistry and biochemistry, which allowed me to interpret studies and work with clients and see results in my own eyes. If you want to access my entire longevity routine and the brands that I'm taking, I invite you to join to over 100 patrons who support me and help me greatly to maintain this channel during my wife's stroke. She had a stroke at age 30. It was a severe stroke. So thank you so much. A shout out to the new patrons. Paul Bryan, Tudor, Linda Sink, Walter, Victoria Davis, Diana Orman, Svera Armani, Carl Mossaro, Maggie, Gabrielle, Lee Crow, Bill Shaw, William Beam, Pete, and Jazzy. When you join, you'll unlock our exclusive forum where you can ask questions, interact with other Longevity members, and also gain priority access to my private group, Longevity Clarity. Go to patreon.com forward slash wellness messiah or use the link below. That's all, folks.